This video lesson was made for the grade 12 students of St. Patrick's CBC in Kimberley, South Africa, during the extended lockdown due to the coronavirus pandemic. You are encouraged to like and share this video with other students and teachers. The poem The Tenant is prescribed for all English home language students who study the Independent Examinations Board curriculum. It forms part of the poetry section for 2020 to 2022. Consider the image that I have selected for the title slides. What do you see? What could this mean on a figurative or symbolic level? What baggage do you feel that you have to pull along with you? Before we start with the poem itself, we need to get to know something about the Zimbabwean poet. Please note that there is some discrepancy with her name in the Clusters Anthology. I am using the spelling of her name as she uses it herself on her social media profiles. Na Ntlube is an accountant by profession, and she has devoted her professional life to charitable and life-changing organisations. She is the founder of the Global Native Foundation, which uses money earned by African expats to make meaningful and sustainable change in Africa. The slogan of the foundation is, I am because we are, which South African students will recognize as the philosophy of Ubuntu. Na Ndlube has a passion for the rural areas of her home country, Zimbabwe. She is determined to address the growing inequality and injustices of poverty by ploughing back, literally, expat remittances into farming communities. She is a committed evangelical Christian. This slide shows some of the results of her efforts turning small sections of underutilized rural areas into profitable and sustainable food producing land. Now for the future accountants and financial planners watching this, how will you use your training to improve the lives of others? In an interview, Na Ngrube spoke generally about her writing saying that she wrote about daily life and the complexities of our human condition. She says that her poem, The Tenant, is an ode to the women around her who chose to focus on their careers instead of taking the risk of being repeatedly hurt by being in relationships. In the same interview, Na Ntlube addressed you, the students who must study her poetry. She reminds us that poetry should be a joy, that it should be a relaxing and fun pastime. She explicitly states that the tenant is not supposed to be interpreted as serious social commentary. Let's read the poem, The Tenant. There is no room for you in my heart. The only tenant who ever lived there left some luggage behind. I didn't even evict her. She simply left without a word. I keep hoping she will come back and collect the luggage, or at least arrange for disposal, clean out the place, throw out old memories. I could possibly live with the marks on the walls. Some are completely indelible, or some I even like. But you see, I am afraid that if it all goes, what will I do with all that empty space? Before we begin the analysis, you need to figure out the best way to take notes and annotate the poem. Spider diagrams, such as this one, 
are my go-to method when faced with a new poem, but there are many other methods. Such as the TIPCAST acronym method, where you write notes under the headings title, paraphrase when you rewrite the poem in your own words, connotations of words, attitude and tone, shifts in meaning, tone or mood, the title for a second time to check if your understanding has changed, and finally, the theme of the poem. Let's start with the title of the poem. A tenant is someone who rents property from a landlord. That's the denotation of the word. What are its connotations? How is a tenant different to a squatter or a resident? Other things to note are the format of the poem. It's written in free verse. The fact that the poet said it was an ode and the use of an extended metaphor as the dominant figurative language technique. The first lines are a declaration leaving no doubt that the speaker is unwilling to embark on a new relationship as the previous relationship ended in heartache and emotional baggage that continues to weigh her down. The metaphor begins here, likening the heart to a physical space. When the previous tenant left, the previous tenant, the person who was loved, it left the speaker's heart empty, except for the luggage that was left behind. This is a reference to the psychological baggage, the painful memories of a relationship that has come to an end. In lines five and six, the reader is given an inkling about the manner in which the relationship ended. It wasn't a mutual decision. The speaker didn't evict her she, that is the object of the speaker's affection, just upped and left without explanation. Note the positioning of the pronouns at the beginning and end of line five, further emphasizing the pain of the separation. The thoughtless actions of the tenant are further emphasized with the words simply left, as though the action was of no importance. This builds on the adjectives in the first four lines of the poem. The only tenant left some luggage behind. A simple enough decision, but with devastating consequences. The speaker seems to believe that there is a chance that the tenant will return and offer an explanation for her decision to leave thus helping the speaker come to terms with the loss and hurt. Any of you who have had your hearts broken by another person will know that it's not so easy to clean out the place and dispose of old memories. It seems clear here that the speaker is referring to the emotional baggage that all relationships leave with us. The memories, the highs, the lows, they never completely disappear. These memories, these marks on the walls of the speaker's heart, have been left because she was prepared to allow someone in. She made herself open and vulnerable. As a result, she will have indelible memories, and not all of them are painful. In the last three lines of the poem, the speaker admits that she is afraid to move on, to make a clean break. She's held hostage by fear. This is ambiguous. The poem is either about the fear of being hurt again by someone else, or it's about the fear of a lifetime of loneliness or a life lived without purpose. The full stop instead of a question mark at the end of the poem indicates the finality of the speaker's decision. There's just too much to risk.
The tone of the poem reflects the message. Past hurts and memories can lead us to cautious decisions, where the speaker would rather protect herself against further pain than embark on an emotional journey which must have risks. The tone is therefore one of reflection, of pensive thoughtfulness. The picture on the title slides should now make more sense to you. And I hope that you've asked yourself just how much baggage you are lugging around behind you. Can you let it go? As always, there are five questions for you to answer to check your understanding of this poem. Remember to write detailed answers with plenty of textual references. If you're not familiar with Peel paragraphs or answers, pause the video here and go over this information on the slide. Here are your five questions. Pause the video and write down your answers. When you're done, come back to the video and check your answers against the suggested answers on the slides that follow. Are you ready for the answers? No, seriously, write your answers first and then go to the next slides. Question one focuses on the impact that memories have on our decision making. If you've been hurt, the memory will cause you to act cautiously in future relationships. The ghosts of your past will lurk in your present and influence your future. The connotations of the word tenant imply that the person is transient, was never there for the long haul. In question three, you are asked to look at the positioning of the word some in relation to left. Although the heart's tenant has left, there is still evidence of the relationship, which is unlikely to disappear. The extended metaphor comparing the heart to a room is immediately recognizable to readers. Most of us have moved home at some point in our lives, leaving items that have outlived their usefulness or are broken and no longer needed. And there's always a sense of loss when this happens. Naturally, the speaker is afraid of being hurt again, of being vulnerable, of allowing someone in. And this inevitably gives the new tenant power over the landlord, the new person in the relationship, power over the owner of the heart. How would you depict this poem in a different art form? Can you imagine inviting someone into your heart to live there rent free? Do you think loneliness is worse than an imperfect relationship with someone else? And what emotional baggage do you carry with you that prevents you from forming solid or trusting relationships? For an unseen poem connected to the tenant, you might like to consider the lyrics of the Rick Astley song, Empty Heart. Song lyrics can be classified as poetry too. Rick Astley? Ask your parents about him, especially if they were teens in the 1980s. I hope that you found this video lesson useful. If you did, please like the video, share it with your friends and colleagues, and subscribe to the Mrs M Teaches English YouTube channel so that you are alerted whenever a new poetry lesson is posted. Until next time, goodbye everyone.